press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. There are certain sections under Income Tax Act 1961 where a company enjoys a tax holiday. Tax holiday means a certain number of period during which you will not pay any tax at all. For example, you are attracting section 80IA or 80IB or even section 10A, 10B or maybe any other section under the Income Tax Act where a company is enjoying a tax holiday. If you are enjoying a tax holiday, then you don't have to pay any taxes at all. And if you don't have to pay any tax at all, there is no question of calculating the current tax. For example, let us say a company is attracting section 10A and let's say for 10 years, it is not supposed to pay any tax at all. Then for 10 years, there is no need for us to determine the current tax. However, there can be timing differences. And we know that timing differences will ultimately lead to deferred taxes. So the entire discussion is not with respect to current tax. The discussion is with respect to the deferred taxes. How should I measure deferred taxes? How should I compute deferred taxes if a firm is enjoying a tax holiday? Guidance is given in Accounting Standard 22. An explanation has been inserted in AS 22 to guide entities attracting these sections that how it should measure the deferred taxes. First of all, you are supposed to compute are there timing differences. Once you come to the conclusion that there are timing differences, these timing differences will be segregated into two categories. So first I will identify that are there timing differences. Let's say the answer is yes, then these timing differences should be segregated, classified into two categories. Category number one. Category one is a timing difference that originates during the tax holiday period and also reverses during the tax holiday period. So the first possibility is that a timing difference originates as well as reverses originates as well as reverses during tax holiday. And the other possibility of timing difference is those differences that will originate during the tax holiday period but will reverse after the end of the tax holiday period. So the second possibility is that it originates in tax holiday but reverses after tax holiday. So carry out your calculations and identify the timing differences. If you come to the conclusion that the timing difference will originate as well as reverse during the tax holiday, ignore those timing differences. Ignore means do not calculate any deferred taxes during uh, uh, sorry, any deferred taxes for these timing differences. But if the timing difference originates in the tax holiday period, but reverses after the end of the tax holiday period, the moment the tax holiday period will end, you may become liable to pay tax or you might just be in a position to save tax. So on those, we have to recognize the deferred taxes. Let's take a simple example and try to understand what exactly are we suggesting over here? For simplicity, let's assume that there is a firm uh, which is enjoying a tax holiday for five years. You know, that for simplicity, let's take five years instead of the normal 10 years. So I'm enjoying, let us say, a tax holiday under the Income Tax Act for the purpose of five years. Now let us say at the beginning of the first year, we are buying a new machine. Let's say a new item of PPE. So we buy new item of PPE. Let us say its useful life is eight years. So we are planning to use this PPE for eight years. This item of PPE obviously will be depreciated. So I'll have to provide for depreciation. We know that depreciation accounts will be as per accounting standard 10, where depreciation for tax will be as per the tax provisions. So the amount of depreciation that I will debit to the PNL and the amount of depreciation that can be claimed for income tax 
those two amounts of depreciation will be different. But we know that this is nothing but a time in difference. The total depreciation in accounts and total depreciation in tax is going to remain the same. So what I will do is I will calculate what are the timing differences. So five years are there, but useful life is eight years. So I introduce year six, seven and eight over here. This is the period after tax holiday, isn't it? So this is the case that we are getting. Now, because the amount of depreciation will be different for accounts and tax, it will result into timing difference. So I will calculate the timing difference now. So we work out the timing difference. The first year is the year in which the timing difference will originate. I'm showing O as the originating year, the year in which the timing difference commences. So this is the originating year. And because it has a useful life of eight years, now from the next year, let us suggest that the timing difference starts reversing. So in the first year, the timing difference originates and in the remaining useful life of seven years, let us say the timing difference is gradually reversing itself. Let's understand now the requirement of the accounting standard. Accounting standard says that a timing difference which originates during the tax holiday period and reverses itself during the tax holiday period should be ignored. So this is the timing difference that needs to be ignored by us. So as you can see, this reversal which is happening, we should ignore the same because it is happening during the tax holiday period. If I am enjoying a tax holiday, where is the question of paying taxes? See, tax holiday means I don't have to pay any tax. And if I don't have to pay any tax, why should I recognize DTL? Because DTL means I will be liable to pay tax. But in tax holiday, I am not supposed to pay tax at all. I cannot even recognize a DTA. DTA is recognizing the fact that I will save tax. I am not paying any tax at all. If I am not paying any tax at all, where is the question of saving it and recognize the DTA? So the accounting standard says that the timing differences which are originating and reversing during the tax holiday period, please ignore them. Then it says that those timing differences which originate in the tax holiday period but reverse after the end of the tax holiday period, those timing differences should be considered. So it is referring to these three years. It originates in the tax holiday, but reverses after the end of tax holiday. These timing differences should be considered. And on that, if it is DTA, then recognize DTA. If it is DTA, then recognize DTA. So these will be considered by us. So these timing differences will be considered for a simple reason. At the moment the fifth year comes to an end, the tax holiday comes to an end, now I will be liable to pay tax, recognize DTL, or I will just be able to save tax, recognize DTL. So that's the requirement over here. Timing differences originating in the tax holiday period and reversing, ignore. Originating in tax holiday but reversing after the tax holiday, do consider the same. Similarly, they have also suggested in AS22 that we should follow the FIFO principle over here. FIFO. By FIFO principle, we mean that the uh, timing difference which is originating first will be considered to be reversing itself first. It's a very logical step and of course, in that way only, we are going to compute the deferred taxes. Milton Limited is a full tax-free enterprise for the first 10 years of its existence. Depreciation timing difference resulting in deferred tax liability in year 1 and 2 is 200 and 400 lakhs respectively. From the third year onwards, it is expected that timing difference would reverse each year by rupees 10 lakhs. Assuming tax rate of 35%, find out the detail at the end of the first and the second year. So you are a full tax-free enterprise for the first 10 years. So for 10 years, I will not pay any tax. 
but there are timing differences and they are resulting into the DTL. In the first year, there is a timing difference of 200 lakhs and in the second year, there is another timing difference of 400 lakhs. From the third year onwards, it is expected that the timing difference will reverse each year by 10 lakhs. Based on this, we are supposed to get the DTL. So, first year, timing difference of 200. Then from year 3 to 10, that means for 8 years, 10 lakhs will reverse. So, total 80 lakhs will reverse. This 80 lakhs is a timing difference that is originating in the tax holiday and reversing also during the tax holiday. So, that we should ignore. So, from 200, I will deduct 80. I will recognize DTL on a timing difference of 120 lakhs. Let's show our calculations and let's present our answer. So we say for the question, we say, I will say timing difference in first year is rupees 200 lakhs. Timing difference of rupees ten lakhs per annum reverse from year three to ten. That is rupees eighty lakhs in total. How we are getting eighty? It is eight in uh, sorry ten into eight years. Rupees eighty lakhs of time and difference originates in tax holiday period. and also reverses during tax holiday period. Right? It is originating as well as reversing in the tax holiday. So we should ignore it. Originates in tax holiday period and also reverses during tax holiday period. Hence, time and difference of rupees 80 lakhs is ignored. Detail in first year equals to total timing difference is 200. From that I'll deduct 80 equals to 200 minus 80 that is 120 into 35%. So that is rupees 42 lakhs. Next. Further, detail in second year equals to in second year, there is further timing differences of 400. So that is 140 lakhs. So we can say in plus, detail at end of second year equals to first year 42. Second year 140, 182 lakhs. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update.